This should be probably a very long video because I tend to make very long videos and also there's a lot of content I want to cover quickly. I'm going to start off with some general things to help uh, parents during this uh, difficult time. And at the bottom, if you look in the description of the video, I hope to add primary, junior, and intermediate specific links so that you can skip ahead through the video and just see the parts that you might be interested in for your child. I mean, overall, this is a strange time and uh, the goal I has, have as a parent is just to kind of keep my kids engaged and learning, um, try some different things out. So I'm going to show you some things you could access at home. Um, and here we go. So the first place you're going to want to go, and your kids should know this site, I'm sure they do, is the EIT, the Elementary Internet Tools, .hdsb.ca. So the reason this is such a cool site, everything on here is, has been collected. It's either been paid for by the ministry or the board. It's all material you can trust. Um, it's not just random, you know, Googling. It's not random YouTube videos. It's it's things you can trust. So basically that's the site, eit.hgsb.ca. Once you go there, you have sort of three general options. If you click, or sorry, mouse over here, you've got your information databases, your books, music, and videos, and then your web tools. So these are the three areas I'm going to talk about um, by each division. But the one thing you're going to need here is you're going to need your, your child's login and password, um, which they should know. Once you have that information, you can then open all these different sites because they're, like I say, they're all paid for, um, so they're not just open to anyone. So once you have that, your kid's email basically without the at hdsb.ca part and their password, you'll be able to access these things. So quickly as a general overview, the information databases are, you know, encyclopedias and things like that. So you can see the, sort of some of the choices there and we'll go over them by division. The books, music, and videos are, are where you can find some of those other things, and depending on what division you're in, some of these are better than others. And then finally, the web tools are different things that educators have collected from the internet that we think are valuable and useful to use. So those are the three main areas. Uh, I'm going to start off in the primary division. So if you're not in primary, go down to that uh, information on the video, and you can skip ahead to junior or intermediate. So for primary, I'm going to start in elementary internet tools in the information databases and basically there's a few sites I want to look at. This first one is Britannica. It's the it's just a general sort of encyclopedia. Um, very useful. So here, enter network username. So I'm going to use my daughter's here because mine's a little bit longer. But all kids start with one, the number one, and then it's usually the full last name. Sometimes if you have a longer last name it might be cut short. It's usually the first three digits of their first name, um, first letters I should say, now, if there's a lot of people with the same name, there might be a two or a three at the end of that. So you have to kind of check that out. Um, you don't need the at hdsb.ca part on this part. Some you may, not on this one. And then it's a four letter password. It doesn't have to be capitalized. It's just four random letters. Once I log in, now I can access the site. So for primary students, they're probably going to want to stick to the elementary. But basically what happens is those three levels are just harder reading content and maybe more information. So it works like you'd expect. You can sort of browse by by area and there's like some little games and stuff, but you know, generally you're gonna want to search. So if your kid's really into, you know, dinosaurs, you can just type dinosaurs at the top and you'll get some recommended articles and then you head in there. And there's usually a lot of content, sometimes there's images, sometimes there's videos, and you can scroll down and it works like a book. So page one is this sort of introduction and then I can click on dinosaurs by type, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and you can bump up the reading level to two or even three if um, you're a really good reader or you just really want to get into something. What's really cool is that all this will actually allow you to play the audio that's written there. So if your child's not a great reader yet, oops, I got my microphone plugged in, but it will read it out loud, okay? Um, you can also click on translate for other languages here and it just, there's a ton of choices. So it's a great site, it's a great overall site, and that's usually where if I have a, a, a child doing research in the library or my class, that's sort of my, my first stop, okay? Um, another great one for primary students here is this Pebble Go. And I'll just click on Pebble Go Animals, and uh, let's see if it lets me log in or not. Oh, it did. So again, it's sorted by type, but if your kid's really into sharks, you know, you type in sharks and you can see all the different sharks. And again, it's an encyclopedia, so you can click that and it will read the audio out loud. There's images. You can see down here in media there's video. Um, I can get an, an image of the range where I can find this shark. Um, so there's a lot of great inf info on this site as well. So those are two really great encyclopedias that you could start on. I'm going to flip over now to books, music, and videos. And the one I want to focus on now is this one called Book Flicks. 
and probably your child has, has seen this in class before. Uh, you can click start. I'm going to skip the intro because I've used this website a lot. Basically, they're really quick collections of uh, fiction and then nonfiction text. So if I click on Animal and Nature, um, and I'll just click this one at random. So I, I get a story, and if I click it, and again, you can't hear it because I have a headphone plugged in, but there's audio. So it'll actually read the story. Pretty cool. Um, and once you finish it, you can head back and you can read then a nonfiction text about, about the same content. So it's about ants as well. And again, I could click read along and have that story read to me. So a great place to get some information and to have more of a story element than just sort of the encyclopedia element. I'm going to flip over to web tools and there's two I really want to focus on for primary. One is going to be in the coding. So coding is pretty cool right now. Kids are, are, are pretty into it. You can really do just about anything. So there's, these are some of the recommendations from the board. Personally, I'm all about Scratch, so I'm going to click on it really quick here. This is really more probably grade, you know, late grade two, which I guess is where we are right now. Grade three. Some of the little kids are going to have trouble with this, but I'm going to show you an alternative. I just click on Create um, once I get to this website, and it's from MIT, so it, like it's a very trustworthy site. Um, but basically, here, if I click on this, it's going to give me an overview of, of how Scratch works and what I can do. What's really cool is as I go through these tutorials, it actually models what I need to do to make the code work. And all snaps together like Lego. It's, it's very, um, sort of, it looks very simple, but you can do a lot with it. It gets very deep. I taught grade eight, and my kids use Scratch a lot, actually, for different projects. Um, and they could do a lot of the things, even in, in math, that I wanted. And if you lose that, just go ahead and click on tutorials. And there's all these built-in tutorials that you can do at home. So you don't have to be an expert. Um, you just The kids follow along. It's very cool. For some of our younger kids, I'm going to show you a website, scratchjunior.org. So you just type in scratchjr.org. Now this won't work on this computer, but it does work on iPads and Chromebooks and uh, Android devices. So you can see the options down here. But basically it's very similar to Scratch that I just showed you, um, except it's, it's meant for smaller kids. I've used this with kids as low as uh, JKSK. So it's very cool, and it's more sort of story-oriented. Um, they kind of build sort of an adventure. It's very cool. So you could check that as well. And again, it's got a learn option where you could click learn, and you can kind of see how it works. OK, so the last one I want to show you on uh, back on the EIT, I'm going to just close that tab, is this one called Gizmos. And this is really only going to be for the grade threes and up, but I'll, I'll include it in primary in case there's some parents watching. So. It works, your teachers can create accounts and stuff like that. But if you're working on this at home, it's a math and science site. So basically, as a parent, all you sort of need to know is you just click on this Find Gizmos up here. And then here you can sort different ways, but I recommend this first one, Gizmos by Academic Standard. You click on that, and I'm just going to scroll down here, and I'm going to click on Ontario. That's where we are. And I'm going to scroll down because it starts with high school. But if you scroll down, you'll see here third grade, fourth grade, and on and on and on. So I'm going to click on third grade, and you'll see here the mathematics connections right to the curriculum. So for example, if you want to work on multiplication here, and you can see the expectation there, if I click on it, I get a little overview of what this is, and I can just click Launch Gizmo, and here's the gizmo. So I'm going to go ahead and launch it. Now there might be a time, yeah, there is. Um, there's a, a timer there, but basically it, what it is is it, it, it's a gizmo. So it's like a, an activity that shows you multiplication. So you can see right here I've got a, a 4 by 5 grid and how that makes 20. Okay, and, there's, and you can turn on different options here. Um, oops. Turn on different options and then you can fill in with different things and you can split up. So the idea here is that kids under, start to understand how, um, you know, maybe if you're multiplying something by 8, you could actually multiply it by five first and then multiply it by the three after. So, you know, something, it's a choice, an option there for some math. So that's kind of it for primary that I want to go through right now. I'm going to go on to junior. So if you want to stay with me, um, then that's great. I'm going to start back in information databases. So for junior, I'm going to start with Britannica. So it's, you know, it's an encyclopedia. When you click on that, it might ask you to log in. I did it in the primary. So if you want to see how to do that. Basically, the kids just need their, their code, which is going to be one, their last name, and then their first three digits of their first name. Um, there might be a two or one. Your, your child will know. And then a four-digit password that they've been given by the board. It's just random. Um, so for 
our junior students, you can decide where you want to start, either elementary or middle. I'm going to just start in elementary so you can see it. Maybe some of our grade fours might be interested in that. So, you know, you're interested in space, you can type in space and you're going to get some recommended articles, images, videos. I'm just going to go, well, let's go space shuttle. So once you click on the article, what's great is you've got some videos, some images, and it works like a book. So you have um, pages, so the introduction, the shuttle features, the shuttle launch, and on and on and on. Each one can be read aloud. Now when I click this, you won't hear it because I have a microphone plugged in, but it will read the text, and as you can see, it's highlighting it as well. So very cool. If I want to bump up the reading level, I can go to two, and you see I get a few more videos. I get a lot more information. Okay, and I, you can also go up to even level three, which is like at a high school reading level. But if it's something they're really interested in, that, that might be no problem. Um, also great, you can have it, it read aloud there, but you can also translate it. So you can switch this into a, another language really quickly. So there it is in Arabic. So pretty cool. So very deep program, lots of stuff you can learn about. And like I said in the intro, the great thing is that this is all you know curated information. It's not just random. This has all been... Um, tested and, and we pay for this as a, as a ministry in Ontario so it's it's trustworthy. Um, Pebble Go this is probably more for the younger kids but I'm going to show it maybe for some of our grade fours. It's just another encyclopedia that's maybe uh, built a little differently. What's cool about it is that you can, again you can search but I'm going to just go through the categories here. Um, it's a little smaller but uh, sometimes the videos are really good and also they tend to have these range maps for different animals. So the Pebble Go is another encyclopedia that you might want to get into. Okay, I'm going to flip over to the um, music and books. And what's cool about this one, I think for junior, there's some options in here. But really this one is called Education Library is the key. If you type in something in here, let's type in black holes. It's going to search a lot of those other sites. So you can see like Learn360 and uh, Overdrive and et cetera, et cetera access learning. This search actually covers a lot of those things. So if you find something interesting in here, um, maybe I'm going to just look for a video for right now. So here's a video and if I click on it, it'll open up and some of these are shorter, some of them are longer, but you're basically getting a video that you can trust the information in. It's It's been collected. It's not a random YouTube video. But look, I'm still in Arabic here. Um, here you go. So here's a 20 minute little documentary on black holes. Oh, an FBI warning. Um, I'll just skip ahead to show you. So some of them are a little older, some of them are newer, some of them are short, some of them are long, but there's a there's a resource you can use at home. Um, so that's the main one I want to show you here. Web tools for my junior guys. I'm definitely going to recommend uh, coding in Scratch. So coding's big in schools right now. We're trying to get kids to think differently, solve problems. So if I click on that website, it comes from MIT, so you know it's it's quality here. If I click on Create, you can just have your, your child run these tutorials inside Scratch and start to learn it. Some kids think it looks kind of babyish because, you know, it's these blocks that you drag in and they snap together. It looks kind of like Lego. But really, they, you can do just about anything you can think of. There's tons of options here. Uh, basically, you can just have your child run the tutorial, um, and it, it teaches them exactly what to do. What's very cool about this is it actually models it. So you don't need to know anything. You can let your kid, you know, put in a pair of headphones and, and go at this on their own. And there's tons of tutorials. If we click on tutorials, you'll see there's tons of options here to make little games, to make programs. Um, so it's a great program, very deep. Um, I'm going to flip back to one that I missed in information databases for junior here. And that's the PK databases down here at the bottom. I'll just click on Earth Space Science first. This is kind of like a more advanced version of that Pebble Go. Um, so if I type in black holes in this one, oops, I find it's pretty comparable to Britannica in terms of the information you get. So it's pretty good. I personally like Britannica better, but just another option, you might get some different information. Again, it's got videos, it's got an information here, and it's sort of organized by pages. So you can click on the, the other titles on the side here to get your information. Um, and again, you can you can listen to this so the kids can listen to it or they can choose a, a language to translate it to. So it's pretty deep. Um, and the last thing I want to show you is back in web tools and two more things actually. I'm going to leave inquiry for last and I'm going to instead show you these gizmos. So if you click on gizmos, um, what happens is you can click on find gizmos and then by academic standard 
And what happens is, if I scroll down here to Ontario, and then I'm going to scroll through the high school and just look at whatever grade. Let's look at fifth grade. So what happens is you get the uh, curriculum content right from the Ontario curriculum of different things that kids um, are required to learn in math. And you can pick one of these games. So here's one subtracting whole numbers and decimals, base 10 blocks. If I click on it, I get a little overview. And I can go ahead and launch that video, or launch that gizmo, sorry. And basically, it's a little activity that will um, teach the kid how they can subtract using these base 10 blocks. And if you scroll down, you'll notice that there's, oh, sorry, you need to log in for that. But basically, they can sort of experiment with different ways. If, if your teacher set up an account, they, they can get assessment questions there as well. Those accounts are, are free through the uh, ministry. I'm going to close that. And the last one I want to show parents here is this inquiry website. This is actually put together by some, um, some staff in Halton. And it, you can see it's French or English. I'm going to click on the English slide. And what it is, it's, it's the idea of kind of where we're trying to go in education and in schools is to have kids sort of research things they're interest, interested in and analyze information and come back and present it to the class. So this, I think, would be a great project maybe over the next two weeks is, um, you know, ask your child what they're interested in. Maybe they're interested in, you know, ancient animals of some sort. So you get them to use those resources, right, from the elementary and your tools. Maybe they go to Britannica or wherever and they research about those animals, they watch some videos, they read some articles, um, and then they come back, right? And maybe they're going to discuss. So if I click on the word, I get more information, right? So they're gonna talk about what they found and you know, does it seem interesting? Does it seem realistic? Um, does it you know, compare to something else they learned about, maybe about dinosaurs or something like that? Um, and there's other choices here. And the, and the idea is to build a question, right? You know, um, what would happen if an ancient human arrived in 2020? Maybe that's their question, right? So they're, they're going to sort of, it's not just, I want to learn about ancient humans. They're, they're trying to answer something. Okay, then we go into, in, into explore next. And maybe they're going to connect it. Okay, they're going to record on a, on a Google Doc, perhaps. We go into analyze. So breaking down the information they found. You know, um, what do they want to talk about? So each one of these, like if I click on analyze, here are some of the words connected to, to that idea, reviewing, interpreting, comparing, summarizing. Okay, if you click on any of those words, you might get an organizer, you might get questions. So it's it's very deep. And then finally, most importantly, is they're going to share their information. So are they going to maybe create a movie? Are they going to make a poster? Are they going to make a, a tweet? <laughs> That's very short. Comic strip, okay, a podcast, an article, a website. So how are they going to share the information that they found? Maybe they're going to um, have a little presentation at home with, with you and the siblings. So pretty cool. Um, and that's a great way to have the kids choose their own thing that they want to focus on during this time, but still, you know, they're still learning and they're, they're breaking down the information, they're coming back with it, presenting it. So that's a great thing that you could do. Okay, I'm going to go into intermediate next, so if you want to stay with me, then great. If not, see you soon. So for my intermediate kids, um, or intermediate parents, I guess, I'm going to show you some things that you could use inside of the EIT to help with your kids during these next few weeks. First one I want to start with is Britannica, and when you click it, it's going to ask you for a password. So you can ask your kids that what their information is. So basically, it's going to be one last name, first three letters of first name, and then the password is going to be four letters. They they've done this many times. Uh, I would start in middle probably for kids in intermediate. Um, when you click on this, it's it's an encyclopedia. So there's you know interesting articles and stuff down below, but generally kids in grade seven eight are going to use the search. So let's go with. Um, I don't know, let's go black holes. I love black holes. So if you type black holes, you're going to get an article or articles about and related to black holes. So if I click on the article, you see there's videos, there's images. Um, what's great is, is that they, they can click on this listen and it's going to read the article to them, which is very cool. If you click on this translate, you can actually flip um, into different languages and, and see the text um, changes, which is very cool. Um, so there's lots of options there. I'm going to flip back to English. Um, also, if you double click a word, I believe it will it will give you a quick sort of a dictionary breakdown of that word, which is great. So tons of stuff in here. And as I scroll down, I get my article. Now maybe that's not enough. I can pump it up to reading level three, and you can see I've got a longer article with more information, more videos, um, lots of stuff there. So that's sort of the best encyclopedia, in my opinion. Um, 
here's another interesting one I think might be interesting for some of our bigger kids. It's called Canadian Points of View. And if I click on that, um, it's again, it might ask you to log in. It didn't ask me this time. But basically, this is like a website that sort of is for debate or for, you know, popular topics that aren't decided yet. So I'll just click on one of these. Let's go with facial recognition technology. And again, you can you can search for anything you want. So I'm going to go facial recognition technology. And what's cool is I get the point. So the point is that facial recognition technology protects and enhances the lives of Canadian citizens. That's one person's opinion. And again, I can click on play and have this information read to me. Counterpoint, facial recognition technology raises major ethical concerns. So what's cool about this is that your child might have, you know, an opinion on some of these topics, which is great. It might be interesting to see what somebody else thinks about it or to see both sides. So pretty cool sort of encyclopedia there, the points of view. Okay, and there's other ones here. Um, maybe I'll just click on this one quick since it says 7 and 8. This is the World Almanac, and it's just another sort of encyclopedia that you can um, go through. But again, it's got science projects, it's got maps, so pretty interesting, different forms of government. So it's another place to collect information. I'm going to flip down to books, music, and videos next. And the one I want to show you is basically just this one. You can explore the others, but if you use the education library search, it searches access learning, it searches, I think, CBC Curio, Learn360, uh, Overdrive. So it actually searches four or five of these all at once, which is why I always show it. And again, if I type in black holes, if I could spell, there we go. Um, I'm going to get all the information. So I got two ebooks and five e videos. Not bad. I'm just going to click on e videos. So if there's one that is, sounds interesting to you in here, so I'll buy a black hole, you can click on the link and it'll open the video. And again, these are all curated by the ministry or the board. So this is information you can trust. It's not just some random YouTube video. So here we got a 50 minute documentary um, about sw being swallowed by a black hole. RIP to that guy. Um, so very cool. All right, so that's the uh, education library search. All right, the other one I want to show you is a couple of things in web tools really quick. I'm not going to show you Scratch. I showed it in junior, so if you want to go back and see Scratch coding, I think it's still very useful for kids at grade 7, 8. And there's lots of coding options available for, for kids that age. Um, but I will show you this inquiry site, which is right here. So if you click on inquiry, you get this thing that has been put together by Halton staff. And basically, this is what I would do if I had an, an older kid at home. I would probably let them choose a topic. So find something you're really interested in. Let's stick with black holes, okay? So the kid says they're really interested in black holes. Cool. So they can start learning about that thing. But what we want is the kids to sort of focus down and ask a question. So instead of just saying, I want to learn about black holes, they might say, what would happen if a black hole opened up in the middle of our solar system, right? And then they're going to, yeah, they're still going to learn about black holes, but they're also bringing something else to it. So each of these you can click on. So let's click on question. If I click on the word question, I get some more information. I get this thing called a Q chart, right? And you don't have to know all this stuff, but basically it's sort of helping them develop a question here. All right, and then you can go on to explore. So I've got my question, um, and I start to gather information. I start to explore different websites. I start to maybe watch some videos. Maybe I'm making a connection to something else I already knew about space, whatever. Okay, and then the next step is to analyze the information that they find. Um, you know, is it accurate? Does it make sense? Did I answer my question? Uh, review everything you found, maybe summarize it, make it shorter. And then the most important step is they're going to share that information back to someone. Maybe they're going to make a website about it and share with a couple of friends. Maybe they're going to make a little presentation at home. Maybe they're going to have a debate. Maybe they're going to make a podcast, okay? So there's lots of different ways to bring that information back. Maybe they're really talented at video. They're going to make a video or an animation in Scratch. So there's tons of options here on, on what they could do. But that would be a great project, I think, over these next two weeks is choosing a topic, you know, focusing down on a question, finding the information, making sure it's accurate, comparing it, all that kind of stuff, and then, and then coming back with something. So that would be my thought for the intermediate kids. So I hope you liked this video. I hope there were some useful things in there. Remember, it all starts at eit.hdsb.ca. And uh, good luck and use the time wisely, and we'll see you back when we see you back.